and if um, if it doesn't work, then it's automatically saved to my computer anyway, so I can always post it later. Mm -hmm. All right. So I am going to go ahead and get started. Hi, my name is Jen with Jen's Den Art, and today we are painting a beautiful fall chapel. Um, I am an acrylic artist. I have my own business called Jen's Den Art. And I have a monthly painting membership where we paint a new painting every week or we paint a new painting once a month, depending on which group, which group you're in. And um, this is a, this is kind of like the kind of stuff that we do in our painting membership. So what I'm going to do today is I am going to take you through one tutorial. OK, see, let's go. All right. So we are going to paint this today and I am going to show you, here we go. I'm going to show you, you do not have to have a round. I just wanted to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. So I went ahead and I went to um, one of the home improvement stores and I bought this really cool round piece. I think it's like seven or eight bucks at, um, I think I bought it at Home Depot and it's just a round it's so pretty and it's thick, thick. I really, really like it. So I'm going to actually paint something on the opposite side of it. And I put these little um, O-rings on the corners to add like a jute hanger. So you can see how I'm going to hang it on my wall when I'm done. And I'm probably going to do like a Christmas scene on the back side. So all I have to do is flip it over. It's going to be super cool. So that's what we're painting today. And I um, I printed out the template. I probably won't even use the template, but I just want to show you that you can easily use a template to do this painting. And I gave you a supply list. Everything is in the guide for this. I gave you a supply list. And our supply list is, um, let's just go back over it in case you didn't see it. One of the main colors that we're going to use in our background is burnt umber. Okay, also unbleached titanium. This color right here, ladies and gents, is the color that actually has that beautiful yellow hue to it. Okay, it is a Liquitex brand and it is called Naples Yellow Hue. It is one of the most beautiful yellows I have ever used in my paintings. So that's why I want to use that one. You don't have to use these same exact colors, though. You are definitely going to, um, you know, have your own options for your colors. But basically, I am just working with all of these fall-like colors, okay? This is a Deco Art Acrylic Burnt Orange. This is a teal folk art teal. So you notice I use a lot of different varieties of colors. Um, I use, here's an orange, just a, I just have that on the side just in case. Here is um, titanium white. Okay. Just a basic old titanium white <clears throat> and a black. Okay. This is just black. I put these in little tubes for me because I use so much of them that I always have those available. Okay. So here we go. The first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take this little, this little thing right here. I'm looking for, let me use this as well. I, don't, I, I can't believe I can't see you. Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but I'll just, I'll just put it up later because it's being recorded. So, okay, and I shouldn't complain. No, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to go ahead and I can just I can just post it in the group again if I have to. You want, me, you want me to email the person that created this? No, just they're on. They're live right now on here. So okay, mm. it's just something with Facebook that we can't do. Anything about. All right. So I'm going to put a little bit of blending medium in my little bowl here. OK, and I'm actually going to use a couple of little bowls. You don't have to use bowls, but I am going to use bowls just because it's easier to mix the blending medium in with my paint. 
And the reason why I'm using blending medium is because I need my paint to move really. Now, you don't have to use blending medium. You can use water if you want to. But I want my paint to move really, really easy. So I'm going to start in the middle. And I'm going to start with what is called burnt umber. And I'm going to mix in my blending medium a little bit of this burnt umber. And I'm going to take a large a large brush. Let me see if I can find my large brush. Where are you, large brush? You think I would have more than one hanging around? Let me just use this one right here. Okay, there it is. All right, so this is actually kind of like a medium to large brush. I'm going to take that and I'm going to mix this burnt umber in my blending medium because I want my background. I want it to move really, really easily. So I'm going to kind of go about the middle and I'm going to start moving back and forth. You see how much easier if you're if you're if you've ever used acrylic paint before, it moves so much easier when you have some type of medium to help it stay a little wet for a little while longer. OK, so I'm going to start in the middle with this dark burnt umber. And then. I'm going to gradually start moving out. Now I'm going to use this burnt orange. And I'm going to put some of that burnt orange. I'm not even going to clean my paintbrush off, but I'm going to put some of that burnt orange in here. I'm going to mix it up. And then I'm going to start putting the burnt orange. And I'm going to make sure that they mix together right on the edge. So I'm going to put some of that burnt orange in the brown and I'm going to move back and forth and back and forth. And I'm going to do the same thing at the top. I'm going to move back and forth. And back and forth. And this is actually going to take us a little while to get it exactly like I want. So you just have to be patient. And you're just going to keep on blending. Keep on blending. Dip a little bit more of that medium on my brush. Get it all the way into the crevices. And then the last color I'm going to use is this Naples yellow. Okay, I'm still not cleaning my brush off, y'all. I'm grabbing some of this Naples yellow. And this to me is the most beautiful color. I'm going to start putting my Naples yellow all the way across. Now look, it doesn't matter if some of that orange is getting mixed up in there. Okay, look how pretty that is. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing at the bottom. I'm going to blend in a little bit into the orange. Keep on going. So the medium really helps your paint move and it helps your blending process much, much better. Let me look and see. All right, so I'm looking at my original and I went a lot lighter. So I'm going to show you how I'm going to lighten this up. I'm going to take some of this, this yellow and I'm going to mix it in the orange. And there we go. That's a lot lighter. That's what I want. 
I'm going to make it work in here. And up here. So I'm mixing the yellow and the orange together. With that blending medium, that blending medium makes all the difference. And I'm going to have to stand up so I can see exactly how it's all working. And let me put a little bit of the orange in the brown. There we go. And make that just a little bit lighter. So I want you to notice what I'm doing here. I'm not being satisfied with just one layer. One layer never does it. You always, if you want your paintings to look like they have depth, you have to do some layering or else you're not going to get that beautiful finished product that you want. So I think this is pretty good. I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to clean my paintbrush off. It's okay. I don't mind. And I'm actually going to mix a little bit of the yellow and orange together to make that blending area work just a little bit. Don't be shy. Get a lot of paint because the more paint you have, the better. Okay, get a lot of paint on your brush and you see how you can get that to blend. And look, you just play with it and play with it as much as you need to, to get it right. I'm going to put some more orange right here. So, you know, I'm doing like hundreds of strokes back and forth and back and forth and just trying to get it all blended in. That looks beautiful just like that. Yeah. So, by the right. way, this is my husband in the background, Michael, if y'all were wondering. He helps me with a lot of my lives when he's home. Yep. And um, for instance, when we couldn't find out how to go live now, I created a, a, a drama and stress and walked around uh, <laughs> raising my head up and making it worse on her so, so i'm a big help <laughs> all right so there we go i like it i like what i have you know what i'm gonna clean my paintbrush off just a little bit more hello anna thanks for coming mm -hmm. on it does look like a tropical sunset. Yay, Miss Kathy. Thank you, Miss Kathy, for having me here. I'm so super excited to be here. Right on. I wish I could share this. I don't know how to share this. No, we're in a group, so you can't share it. Oh, you can't share it. No, not All when right. you're in a group. Okay. Groups you cannot share. No group sharing. No group sharing. You can share the group. Carol. But you can't share the post in the group. Carol, bless your heart and thank you. What did she say? She said, you are a big help. We could hear your the calm in your voice. <laughs> that was the eye that you heard of the storm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm just putting a little bit more yellow up there because I feel like it needs a little bit more brightness up there. Hello, Tracy. Okay. So um, I, if I were you, I would work this over and over until you get it right. But keep your paint moist. Keep your paintbrush moist. I like to use a blending medium. If you don't have blending medium, you can do the same thing with water. Okay, you can do the same thing with water. It's just a little bit more difficult. Um, when you're painting on wood, wood absorbs your, um, your paint very, very fast. So if you are painting this later, I would suggest that before you start painting on your wood surface, see how professional I am? Look at my paintbrush. <laughs> this is my paintbrush that I'm using. <laughs> um, that's because I left it in the water for too long and the glue just came off. Um, so I would either gesso your surface, your wood surface, or put a, a layer of like white paint. I put a layer of, of white paint before I started painting on this. And so that kind of 
gives you a barrier between your paint, your paint layer and your wood layer so that the paint that you're the color and the pigment that you're trying to get to show is going to show much brighter if you put a white layer underneath. So either white gesso or um, or a, just white paint, just white acrylic paint will do fine. OK. All right. That is the wedding vows. I'm not sure. I know what that's about. Okay, so. <laughs> I do. <laughs> right on, Miss Joan. Right All right, on. so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to start on my church. And because my focus in this painting, when I started creating it, because my focus is more of, um, of the fall colors. I did not want to do a stark white church. I wanted to keep all the warm and fuzzy feel of this painting. So instead of using white, I went ahead and used what's called creamy white or titanium white. Okay, and I'm going to show you. I don't think I took it out. Here it is. Oh, that's not it. Where's my creamy white? Here it is. Milky white. I'm sorry. It's called milky white. I don't know if I put that one on um, on the list, but if I could get it open. I, I did not put that on the list, Milky White. It's, it's almost like a, a vanilla. If you have vanilla in your craft paints, that's the color that I'm using. It's like a vanilla. Okay, so if you are painting this and you want to use the template, then you're going to have to stop and you're going to have to let this dry before you can apply the template, okay? I am just going to skip, <clears throat> to skip the template part and I'm just gonna go straight into the painting. And that's the glory of having replays so you can stop and start your video <laughs> whenever you want. That's right. So um, let me see about where my church and okay, so I'm going to sketch this out on here because I'm working wet on wet. And what does that mean, wet on wet? My paint is wet and I'm and my paint that I'm applying is wet and the paint that I'm painting with is wet. The paint on the surface is still wet is basically what I'm saying. Gotcha. Does that make sense? I don't think I made any sense in what I just said. So I'm just, I'm actually sketching using my paintbrush. So yes, it got quiet because I have to concentrate on what I'm doing. Someone put, it looks like candy corn. It looks like candy corn. I said, mmm, -mm, and then Cindy said it makes me hungry. <laughs> it mm. does look like candy corn. Mm -hmm. doesn't it? I love eating the, the white tip first. And then I eat the whole thing and I nibble like I'm a squirrel eating a nut. Anyway, I mean, when I did that when I was a child, I don't do that as an adult. I'm just saying. I bet you do. No, I don't <laughs> do that. Sometimes. <laughs> All right. So I'm giving myself some points here to follow. And I'm just going to sketch it out. Very basic church, but it's a beautiful fall chapel. Okay, so that is close to what I need for my chapel. All right, now I'm going to take... Mm -hmm. I think I'm going to go just a teeny, teeny bit lower. <laughs> Diane Pink said, I just happened to click, click open Facebook and look what I have found. Look, Diana, you're back again. Hello from beautiful. We're Kentucky. making some great friends. Y'all, I have, you might want to put the link in the, uh, I have a free 30 day acrylic 101 course going on right now. Do you that? know the, yeah, do I? Michael's going to look up the link no, for I it. No, I got it right here. I got it. And uh, and put it in the comments for me. I know what it All right. is already. So I'm going to take my white. my It's a creamy white or a milky white or a vanilla. Okay, I don't want to use stark white. And I'm going to start applying this paint. 
on to my church. And notice the direction that my strokes are going. Why do you think my strokes are going in that direction? Anybody have an idea? Why do you think I'm going this way with my strokes? Hmm. Let's see if anybody got it. Grain of the wood, A plus. Wood grain, A plus. I have a better answer, though. There's more than one answer. That's not the answer I was looking for, but I'm going to tell you that that was a good answer. <laughs> Cindy gave me an A plus for posting the acrylic 101. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Siding, clapboards. I'm in the one-on-one -on -one class. I thought this was tomorrow with the other artist. Um, Diana, this is this is not for acrylic 101. I'm just doing something in another group for fun. Great okay, wood, so, so this is like not wood. the chapel we're painting in the 101. This is something different. Boards, texture. Um, yes. Siding, planks. Yes, that is exactly right. So. My church is going to have, it's going to look, look at the original one. Okay, look which way the boards look like they go. They go horizontal. So when I am applying my paint with the paintbrush strokes, I want my paint to have the same effect already, even before I go to put all the horizontal lines. Okay, so that's why I'm applying my paint this way. Now, I'm not going to lie to you. I can take my paintbrush and I can do this. And I can go in this direction all I want up until I'm ready to finish applying all of the paint. So let's just say I want to do this and I want to go all this way. I'm just going to show you. I can apply all of the paint this way. You see, you can see all your strokes. And if you want your planks to go straight up and down, then I would definitely do this. All right, I'm going to just do it really fast. But now, look at look at what I have. I have like pretty much a big mess. If I do all of my strokes like all different ways, you can see it's like, it's just not nice. All right. So what you want to do is... You want to put your strokes in the same direction as you know that you're going to make your wood grain for the church. Not the wood that we're painting on, but for the church. And it's going to make a much better product for you when you're done painting. And uh, Michael said I had a question. Yes. Are you still using a flat brush? Yes. I am still using a flat brush. But I change to a medium, I call it a medium sized flat brush. So I kind of call all of my paint brushes small, medium, large. And the small is like a quarter of an inch wide. The medium is about a half inch wide to an inch wide. And the large is like an inch to two inches. So that's kind of my my size measurements of small, medium, and large, because I don't want you to feel like you have to get the exact same brush as me. So that's why I use those. Um, I use small, medium, and large as my explanation. Right I get a lot of questions about that too, because you don't buy brushes in small, mediums, and larges. <laughs> that's just my term for it. All right. So first layer is done. If you are using a craft paint, you're probably going to have to put two or three layers because craft paints are a lot more um, transparent. And because we're painting on such a dark surface, you're, you're going to see that your paint, it's going to be hard for that, that cream color to actually um, show through. Or it's, gonna, it's actually going to show through. And that's not what you want. All right, so now I'm going to go into my burnt umber. Okay, I'm just going to 
put a little bit more paint on my Burt, my same paintbrush, and I'm going to come in here and add some paint for. You are a great teacher. Thanks for explaining things so well from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. You are welcome. Teaching is my passion. And, that is and what I've done all of my great. life. Oh, that's odd. And Michael looks great. Yeah, what? That, was, that is odd. Huh? <laughs> Whatever that is. Whatever. Okay, so now I'm going to come down the sides with the side of my paintbrush. And look, I'm using my pinky to hold myself kind of steady on my board. Mm. And I'm using that burnt umber. That's smart. Using your pinky. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go back and find this one in here. I kind of hit it, but it's somewhere right there. Let's, oops, see what I just did? I just dropped some paint on my white. That's all right, though. I'm going to show you how to fix that. And let's go down the sides. My burnt umber. That's all I'm using is burnt umber. Let's go with a little bit right here. All right, don't even worry about that little spot I put right there. I'm going to show you how to fix that in just a minute. Okay, now this is what I'm getting ready to do. I'm going to clean my paintbrush off. And I'm going to mix a color. Here's the color that I'm going to mix. Y'all are going to be like, oh my goodness. We're going to mix teal. I wanted to put some teal in my in my uh, church. So I'm going to take some teal. It's probably too much. And I'm going to take my burnt umber. I'm going to try not to waste. So I'm taking some I already have out. And I'm going to mix teal and burnt umber together. And watch how pretty that color comes out. Okay, and the reason why this color works so well is because I am mixing it with a color that's already used in my painting. Mm. So if I were to apply that teal by itself, it would be so unplay. It would be just misplaced. Because the, the teal, this bright teal, just does not have a warm feeling. It doesn't have any warm. It's a cool color. And you would be sticking that cool color on this warm painting, and it just wouldn't work right. So if I mix some of my warm, my, my burnt umber, with that teal, what it's doing is it's causing a nice, warm, beautiful color to come out. And it, it's to me, it's just magical. It's magical to mix colors. It's one of my favorite things to do. And you'd be so surprised at what you can do when you mix colors together. Ruth said, I didn't get the template, template printed. Wrong format. Need that one that starts with a P. I don't know what that means. I don't, I don't know what that means either. <laughs> You gotta remember. Okay. I don't understand a lot. <laughs> I'm making my. I'm freehand in this just because it's just my paint is still wet, so I'm freehanding all of this that I'm putting on here. I don't want to stick the template on top. I think she means B, like the block poster version. I bet you oh, that's what PDF. she means. PDF. Gotcha. Oh, the PDF. PDF. Yeah, I did not make a PDF for this one. I just made a JPEG for this one. Because block poster would not make it 14 by 14 for me. So that's when Tribe Sisters, my Canva, my Canva lessons really come in handy now. Right on. 
Okay. So I'm going to continue with this beautiful blue color that I made, and I'm going to start using a palette knife. Okay. So I'm going to take some more of this blue color and I'm going to make my trees. Believe it or not, my trees are going to be this bluish green. And I'm going to take my palette knife and I'm not going to be really particular on what I'm doing. I'm just taking a glob of paint here and I'm, I'm kind of going kind of flat with the palette knife and I'm moving it down and I'm moving it down and I'm moving it down and I'm making just some little swooshes with it to make my trees. See how that's working? Can I tell you something real quick? Yep. Carol Bodan mm -hmm. said, you can always take the JPEG, go to ilovepdf.com and convert it to a PDF. Well, wow. There you go. Hubba hubba. I've been needing to know that for like 20 years. Well, I wonder if it makes it a different size for you too. I don't know. That's, that's the, awesome. the biggest question is. So I'm going to go kind of high with this one. And I'm going to make another tree here. I'm kind of running out of paint, so I might have to mix some more. And look, don't be afraid to move. See, I need I need my arm to work this way, to down to the right. So I'm moving my piece so that I can get that. What you laughing at? Joan Rowe came across a video accidentally today. Someone was using a palette knife to frost a cake. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So keep on going, keep on going as far as you want. I am going to use this as, oops, I'm getting all my white paint right here. I am going to use this area right here as my horizon. So I'm going to start grabbing some of my other paints, my, uh, my browns. I don't normally use these little cups very often. I normally use a, a, a glass palette. And I'm going to start making my, notice I'm keeping it really, really loose. I'm going to start making my, my floor, my, you know, the, the surface here with my palette knife and some burnt umber. Just a little bit more. Bunch of paint. Don't be shy with the paint. The paint, the more paint, the better. Okay. I am going to take some of this. You know what? I'm going to put some on this paper right here because I can't get what I want. I want to do this. Let me show you what I'm doing. If you can see what I'm doing here. I'm taking my palette knife and I'm moving it on the side of the palette knife in this brown. And I'm getting the whole side of the palette knife full of paint. See the side of it? And I'm going to come to this tree and I'm going to make a little bit of a, a tree trunk with it. I'm going to do the same thing here. And I'm going to start making my little lines for my church with my palette knife. And I'm going to go down to a smaller palette knife because or what I could do is I could just make sure that I only put the paint on the edge of the palette knife, like kind of on the, the tip of it. And see right there, that little piece, that's fine. Because look, all I have to do is that. I love how you make it look like plank wood. Mm-hmm. Or ship line. And I then watch, one. watch what else I'm going to do. Mm, great idea, Cindy. On a smaller scale, this would make a beautiful Christmas ornament. Christmas ornament all the way, y'all. Yes, it That's would. That's what I'm talking about. There Great you idea, go. Cindy. Great idea. Especially on those wooden round pieces. Okay, so watch this. I am now going to take a dry paintbrush and I'm just going to, I'm going to move a little bit of that brown paint into the white. Draw a paintbrush. I don't have anything on that paintbrush. 
And what it's doing is it's making kind of like some old mildewy spots on the church. You know what I'm saying? I agree, Teresa. Beautiful. So super easy to get that effect. So a little bit there, a little bit there. Can you give me a time, baby? Yes, ma'am. It is uh, 352. Alrighty. If you're in the mountain state of Montana, it's 352. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit more fun on the sides because I need some of this yellow in this area. So I'm just going to take some of this yellow and I'm going to make like there's like some more bushes back here. Because I need my eyes to play right with the top, the bottom. I, I don't want just the yellow up here and up here and nowhere else. So I need my eyes to work right. And I need to make my eyes happy. And so I'm going to add some of that yellow. And like just, you know, just like some yellow bushes or I don't know. It could just be for fun. Maybe you just like the color yellow. Maybe you want to put a little bit of yellow up here like this. What are you using the palette on? Mm-hmm. And you just you just spread that. Yeah. And then I could even take my finger and just kind of like uh faded paint. Yeah. On the yeah. See? Ta-da. Take your time. You are the last artist of the day, and we love watching you. Oh, y'all are so Carol sweet. Oh, isn't that nice? Thank you, Miss Carol. You're a sweetheart. Dolores, love that you're in Idaho right next to us. Thank you for saying it looks great and everyone else saying that this looks wonderful and beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm thanking for Ginger Patricia. Do what? Margaret says you get a B. I get a B? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> what? And then she puts beautiful. Love it. <laughs> okay. B for beautiful. That's what it is. Okay. So I feel like my trees yeah, are too dark. Okay, thank y'all so Kathy much. Kathy said that as well. Um, thank you, Miss Kathy. I feel like my trees are too dark. And I still have some of this little milky white out here. So I'm going to grab some of this milky white. And I'm going to stick a little bit down here. Just a little bit more. And then I am going to grab my palette knife. Y'all see how I'm holding my palette knife? I'm holding it like almost all the way on the end and or like all the way to the tip because it gives me so much more control than holding it way back here. If I hold it way back here and I go to, to work on one particular little area, I'm not going to have as much control as I would if I put my hand right here, right in the spot, almost with my finger where I want my paint to go. And it just gives me a lot more control. So I decided because I feel like my trees are so dark, I'm coming back on my trees and I'm adding just the same color of the church. I'm not using a different color. I don't want to add any more colors to this. I don't want to grab a white. I don't want to grab a gray. I just want to stay with these warm colors that I have. So I'm making sure that I use the same colors that I've already used in my painting. Okay, if that color is not, you know, enticing to you, just do yourself a favor and just don't use, don't go grab any more colors that you haven't already accepted into your painting, okay? What I did to start this painting was I said, I need, I want a very warm fall-like painting. So I'm thinking, I, I thought about red, um, like a burgundy, but after I had the orange and the brown, I felt like it would be better to add like a green or a blue. And the reason why I went with the blue is because everybody loves blue. Everybody loves blue more than anything else. Mm -hmm. So the color scheme is the teal, the burnt umber, the gold, the brown, and the orange. And then, of course, your milky white. And that's it. And so I've decided those are my colors. Those are the colors I'm sticking with. I'm sticking to it. And that's just the way it's going to be. 
Now, black always adds a very nice pop to things. And black does not hurt to add in this painting as well. So I'm going to take this palette knife that has a nice little edge to it right here. You may not have that palette knife, but that's okay. You can just use your paintbrush or something else. And the reason why I'm using that really small one is because I'm going to come up here and I'm going to make my cross. And I know that I need a small palette knife that's not too um, too long. And then I'm going to keep on going with it. And I'm going to just do a little bit more outline on just some areas of the church. And watch how that's going to make it pop. Not everywhere, just some areas. I'm going to add some more highlights. I feel like maybe down here, down here. Question. How do I make black? like more dull, like old metal, and I guess instead of shiny, right? Like old metal, are you talking about like rusty or? Oh wait, it's from Mary. Let's wait and see what she says. RG, if, well, I guess it depends on, I'm thinking black and brown together. If you want that rust color. Yeah. See what she says. Actually, my favorite blackish old rusty is called raw umber. Raw umber is a brownish black. And if you add white to it, it's a perfect grayish brown. It's a beautiful color. Mm. Okay. So my last thing I am going to do is. Like weathered black, maybe brown undertones, not rust really. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the perfect color to start with is raw umber. Raw umber is probably a professional grade paint. But um, as you can tell, I'm a big believer in professional grade paints instead of craft paints. Not that there's anything wrong with craft paints because you saw that I used some in here. Um, it just makes it makes your piece shine better and it, it makes your painting experience better as well. I am an acrylic artist. so my artwork is sold in art stores so i make sure that i use um i use higher grade paints than uh you know because i'm selling my pieces so okay so the next thing i'm gonna do is i'm gonna do my gather now this is where i debated on do i do a, a blue gather do i do a brown gather i know the first thing i notice is the color is a light color. So I knew that when I do the word gather, I wanted to do it in a dark color because you always want those darks and lights to pop. Okay, so since this is light, I knew I wanted dark. And when I look at my painting and I ask myself, well, Ginger, what are the dark colors in your painting? There's really only two dark colors in the painting besides black, but I don't want to go with black. The only two colors in the painting that are dark are my burnt umber and my, my dark teal, okay? So I'm asking myself, what color would I like? And I like the teal. So we're going with the teal, all right? I love the way you teal, <laughs> So yeah, you have to use your own, your own, you know, feelings about things. You can't mm. just, you know, it's very important. So I am not the best calligraphy maker in the world. Therefore, I like to use a template to do calligraphy because I try to do calligraphy and it comes out okay, but I just don't take the time to learn how to do it that great. All right, so I'm going to use a little piece of transfer paper and I'm using white. I, the reason why I'm using white is because on my first one that I did, I used black and the black got stuck to some of my paint on the sides. And so I don't want to use black again. So I'm going to use white and I'm going to put it right here. And I am going to find a pin. Here we go. Pin. 
And I'm going to see if this is going to transfer. Yes, it transfers beautifully. This white paper is, um, it's very, very chalky underneath. And the chalk is going to easily come off. So I'm going to show it to you in just a second. Okay, see? The white is going to come off a lot easier than the black wheel. And I like to use baby wipes for like little things like that, like with my chalk. And I can get all of my extra chalk off. of my sign and I would probably pass a little baby wipe on there again later okay so how are we going to transfer this and make it look super cool this is what I'm going to do I'm going to take a I'm going to take two different paintbrushes I am going to take let me find my paintbrushes that I want Hang on one sec. I just had them. Just had them. Where's my little? All right. Well, I don't see my little. You want me to look for it? It went. Okay. These are the two paintbrushes I'm going to use. I don't know where my other one went. I had like a super cute little pointed one, but oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I got it. I got it. Here it is. All right. Um, one of them is like a liner brush, teeny tiny. And then the other one is a little bit bigger, but it has a point on it. It has a super duper pointy end to it. Okay. And I'm going to take the rest of this green paint. I'm going to dip my paintbrush in my water and I'm going to get my paint like a really, really watery consistency. Really, really watery. I don't use um I don't use paint pens very often, but a paint pen in this color is probably you'll never find a paint pen in this color. So, but if you want to use a paint pen, just use like black or brown. Do they even have paint pens in brown? I don't know. Maybe a steely dark gray. That was for the rust oh, color. Oh, okay. So now that my paint is super moist i'm gonna zoom in on here so y'all can see what i'm doing so is the teal still going to have burnt umber in for lettering yes it's the same one i use for it's it's the same mixture i just okay. had a little bit extra oh that's a great close-up okay yeah so i'm going to take this paintbrush and i'm going to Push down where I want it to be thick. And this is the way I like to do it. I like to push down to go thick. And everywhere where I want that thick stroke, I'm going to push down. And when I say push down, I push down kind of hard because I want the paintbrush to give me a thick stroke. So your down strokes are always your thick strokes. Uh -huh. So there we go. My down stroke is always my thick stroke. Notice I'm skipping a lot of spots because I'm good. focusing on only where I want the thick strokes because I'm using a thick stroke paintbrush right now. Does it matter which part of the letter you make thick or not? Or? It, it's just the Preference. calligraphy way to do it. Oh, okay. You know, it's just what like all the, the hand lettering people do. So thick. Thick. All right, so I'm going to switch paintbrushes now, and everywhere else is going to get the thin stroke. Do I have an even thinner? Use a really, really thin paintbrush. Here's one that's even thinner. No, I was going to get it. <laughs> I got, it's like, are you okay? I got, I got excited about what we were doing. Was, <laughs> Don't fall. More drama. All right, so really thin paintbrush, and I'm going to come back. Now, let me teach you something here. 
I'm not good at making up strokes with a paintbrush. I'm only good at making down strokes with a paintbrush. So I'm not going to try to come from the bottom and go up. I'm going to come from the top and I'm going to go down. And I'm going to come from the top and I'm going to go down. Top, down, top, down, top, down, top, down. You see, y'all understand what I'm saying here? Top, down, I'm shaking. Why? I don't know. Top, down, top, down. Y'all want me to keep saying it? Top, top down, down, top, top down. down. I'll say it, top, down. Top, down. Top down. Oh, well, probably. I mean, probably enough. <laughs> okay. Almost done. Let me get this little. Top down. <laughs> this so, one's side to side. So. Side to side and top down. Okay. I don't like that little piece right there. And if you have to go over with another color, you can. How awesome is that? Let's zoom back out so we can see what we got. Okay, ladies and gents. All right, I'm close to the end. Mm. Isn't it pretty? Let me show you something that I did. So this is this is masterpiece number two that we just created together. How pretty is that? Gorgeous. Um, this. Oh, and the sides, if you wanted to do the sides, I did it with the yellow. The, um, what is it called again? Naples Yellow Hue. I did the sides with the yellow. Right on. And hang on, I'm going to show you just one more thing here. Look what, she, look what she did earlier, guys. Okay, so this is what I did on this one. And I, I already told y'all, or I don't know if y'all were able to see me, but this is super reversible because it's so thick. And the way that I did the hanger, I didn't use the back of the board to, to create a hanger. I used the sides of the board to create a hanger so I can make this reversible. I love reversible things. It's just one of my things I love to do, especially for Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yeah. Okay, so what I did here was I measured, I took, um, I just took like something that was straight edge, like something like this and I just put it across I just put it across the whole board and I said all right I want to put two holes on each side Ooh, I want to put two holes on each side right here so I marked my little spots and then I took an o-ring y'all know what an o-ring is it's a little bitty screw I don't have any right here it's got screws. It's got a screw, like you can screw it into a piece of wood, and it just I don't makes think a you circle. Can see it? Because I covered it up with the jute, but it's a little bitty screw that has a little O on the end of it, a little circle on the end of it. Y'all know, y'all probably use these all the time. And so I put, I screwed in a little O ring on each side, and then I took some jute. I love country. I love everything jute wise. I don't like sparkly. I like um, matte finish on just about everything. I like rustic. So I wanted to use jute. Um, so I used the jute that I had on hand, and I just made a bunch of knots over and over and over to kind of hide that little O-ring. And look at that. I got me a little hanger. How cute is that? All right. So I hope y'all enjoyed. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about um, my business first before I get off. And before you do that, will you remind everyone that Kathy Freeman is going live with a Zoom at 7 o'clock Central. The name of that is In Guide Number One. Okay. Did y'all hear that? Everybody well, heard that? It's not a recorded Zoom. It's Say a live it Zoom. It's a live Zoom with Kathy Freeman today, 7 o'clock Central. Okay. And it's you find it by going to Facebook and it's N I N guide number one. <laughs> okay. Ginger LaCour is so stinking cute. Y'all are too cute. Y'all are funny. Okay. So, um, last thing I'm going to say, I have a monthly membership 
you need these links now so okay. you can put them in okay hey, i have a question too by the way i have i have actually two monthly memberships i have one that is seventeen dollars a month for one painting a month with me i have a second membership that is thirty five dollars a month for four we go live weekly in that group so the first the first group is called jen's den mini tribe and it is a one one painting per month in a private facebook group and then the second group is one painting per week in a private facebook group so i have two memberships um they are the mini tribe is open all the time you can get in and get out whenever you want the tribe opens to the public on September 30th, and I only open three times a year, and it's opening up again. What is that like? Two weeks? Right on. Okay. Um, so that's coming up. And also, is it stuck on here? Sorry. I am, this is a one-time event. It's not a membership. It's not a monthly subscription. It is a one-time event for five days and it starts on September 30th also. And it is $15 to get into this event. So that one's Jensen or got you got it? Got okay. It. This one is, ta-da, it's reversible. <laughs> Y'all know I love reversible stuff. So it is called Home for the Holidays, and I call it a pop-up paint party. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be painting this on one side. It's a 12 by 36, like, porch leaner, I guess you can call it. And we're painting this on the opposite side. And so that is happening starting September 30th. So you are more than welcome to join us for that. It's only $15. It's a one-time payment. You are not obligated for a monthly subscription at all. It is just a one-time fun event that I offer to non-tribe members. If you're a tribe member, you get in free. But if you're a non-tribe member and you still want to paint with me, that's a great way to every few months, probably every every like three months, I do just a, a simple deal like that. So Anyway, I just wanted to share all that with you, and I want to thank you all for being here. Please follow my page, Jen's Den Art, and I want to thank everyone on the Creative Party Weekend um, group for everything y'all have done, and I hope you all have a great day. Love you lots. Do you have anything else? Yes. God bless you all. Yes. Um, if, if you want to become a part of of not just a membership, uh, a program, but a group of like-minded women and maybe a man or two other than myself. We do have a couple of men. Who like mm -hmm. to share their joy and their excitement, not only for painting, but for Jesus Christ. Uh, then this is a place to come to. So we love you guys and we hope you have a great weekend. Mwah. God bless. We're going elk hunting in a little while. Wish us luck. Game on, Bye. baby. <laughs>